Welcome to another episode of the SEM Podcast. Jack Bryce joined again by Zach Hewlett hosting today. We've got Hannah McFarland, well, now Hannah Lau. And wh- where are you joining us from? Um, yeah, so we we now live in Sheffield, so the north of England. Um, we're right on the edge of the beautiful Peak District, so which which we love. Um, it reminds us, it reminds me a bit of Scotland. It's kind of you know that beautiful outdoors. Yeah, um, that's great. awesome. And we'll start now with uh, you know how you decided to go on a mission how you ended up in Scotland, and then we'll skip over the mission, talk about what you've been up to since you got back, and then we'll go back and reminisce. So if you want to start us out with how it all started. Yeah, well, um, I'm going to be honest. Um, So I I grew up in a family of seven kids, um, and I have six brothers. And as as it was in those days, you know, the, the strong encouragement for young men to to go on a mission and and especially in our home with six boys there was a lot of my parents had a lot on their hands um and not much encouragement for me to go on a mission and and I was quite happy to hide from that because you know for me it, it was a scary thing um and you know I wasn't the most outgoing and anyone who knew me on my mission my companions will vouch for this and people that knew me before, I was a really fussy eater. And and it sounds a silly thing, but that for me was, you know, the thought of dinner appointments. There was no way I was serving a mission. So, yeah, so I had no intention. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so it was, it was you know, a year before my mission. And I was a student in Leeds, finished my second year, and I had a plan. Um, and... And all of a sudden, the plan just didn't feel right, um, you know. And all of a sudden, I just had this that feeling of you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know. Something, oh, yeah. And <laughs> I just, so, you know, it, it, yeah, it just made me feel really uneasy. But um, and it was a home teacher actually who suggested that I just write a list of any opportunity, you know, um, opportunity out there, all the things I was thinking about. And he also was the one who said. And put a mission on that list um and so I did and it was right at the bottom of the list <laughs> um but I prayed about it as encouraged and I had you know for me one of the earliest you know strongest testimonies that I had of you know that the Heavenly Father answers prayers um in a really strong way and I was to serve the mission um and I cried <laughs> Um, you know, I think just the emotion of it, the fear, because I not even considered it. Um, yeah. And yeah, and so then began the preparation. I love looking back at that of how Heavenly Father's hand as he kind of guided me through that. You know, money was an issue. I was a poor student. Um, and I look at the miracles he did there. Um, the spiritual preparation, President Hinckley's challenge to read the Book of Mormon in a year was then um yeah. so I read awesome. the book moment in a year uh, which I'd not done before loads of things I got tucked in by a family um the Wigglesworths um took me in and allowed me to be able to go on a mission you know I really felt like if they hadn't have done that um there was just so many things along the way um and then obviously came the mission call um and and that was a big thing for me because you know, because of all my fears, you know, I, I needed something that was not going to be too scary. Um, and <laughs> my, um, my That's the mom, opposite of what we hear from most people in England. They're looking for know, the exotic yeah, adventure, I, right? I, know, I was the, the opposite. <laughs> like, I couldn't be more opposite to everybody else. And, um, you know, for me, that day when my mom sent me that message and the realisation that, you know, in a few months I could be going to Russia, you know, or anywhere. And I was, you know, that terrified me. Um, but little to my knowledge, so my mum sent me the message because uh, it arrived back home and I was up in Leeds and, you know, it's arrived. We're all going to be on the phone at six o'clock, you know, type thing. Um, 
But my brother, who lived at home, thought it'd be really funny to open my mission call and to change where I was going. Oh, he photocopied my mission call, with, but blanked out and put a new destination in there. <laughs> Oh Sealed back up, <laughs> ready six o'clock. <laughs> um, and so six o'clock came, and we were all there. And obviously, my mum read, and, and so she read, you know, Hannah McFarlane, you've been called to serve in the, the island mission. And, um, and I just was like, I just didn't, you know, I, you know. The the joke behind it was my boyfriend was serving in the island mission. <laughs> oh god. That, that was the joke behind it. <laughs> That's what your brother was and after. I and I just but I I just felt like it that wasn't my mission, you know, and I just started crying again. <laughs> <laughs> so at oh, which god. point my brother felt really knew he'd messed up. Um <laughs> And and obviously took the phone off my mum and said, "Do you not want to go to Ireland?" And I said, "No, I don't." <laughs> and he said, "Good, because you're going to Scotland." <laughs> um, oh man! <laughs> um, and obviously there was lots of confusion, but you know, for me, I knew it was right. And and in that moment, I was just like, "Yes," you know. Um, and so. So yeah, so I know you probably heard a lot of disappointment at Scotland, but for me, I was, you know, that just felt right, and that just Heavenly Father knew me, and off to Scotland it was. Did your brother right. take take a whipping for that? Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I I can imagine like your mom going, that was the nastiest of nasty tricks that he could have pulled on you, like. I could see my mom, if that had happened to me, she would have beat somebody up. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. I was up far away, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh, that would have been so hard. Yeah. So what was the timing of that? When did you get your call and when did you go to the Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Um I know it wasn't a massive wait because um, I entered the MTC um, March 2007. Is that okay. right? I'm always getting my dates. So not 2006. 2006. I was going to say, because yeah. otherwise you would have missed me completely. Yeah, no, 2006. March 2006, um, I arrived in the MTC and I feel like I had two months maybe of the preparation. It wasn't. A massive amount of time. Hmm. Interesting. Because so, you had everything already. They just said you just need to go, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yes. great. Cool. All right. So take us now, getting back from the mission, what you've been up to since you got home. Yeah. So getting home was uh was hard i think because I, I went home home to back to my mom and dad um and I, and so before my mission i'd lived um away for four years um all together and then obviously a mission so it'd been a long time um um away from home and so so that was quite um you know quite different and um and so I'd say I was back home for about six months um I worked as a I've always worked in education so I worked in the co local college as a learning mentor which which I enjoyed um and then at six months I've been home about six months and I, I found it hard I missed the mission I was almost a bit jealous of the elders for getting two years because <laughs> I I you know I felt like um, I came home too early and I don't know if that's because I'd had brothers who'd served and I kind of had this rough time of a mission and how long it lasts so I don't know 18 months I wasn't quite ready to come home and I would have loved that extra six months hmm. um, and then at six months I was when I met my husband um, so we met at a church dance um, and it was a companion of his that introduced us he actually came um, back for he's American and he actually came over to visit from America. Um, 
and introduced us um, to each other at a church dance. So, um, and, um, cool. Yeah. So, so that was kind of um, kind of fun. And then we dated um, about nine months, and then we're married in the London, um, sealed in the London Temple. Um, yeah, and then we've. It's, we were then, so my husband is from Essex, so just outside of London. So that's his home. So that's where we actually have lived for the last 12 years. So we just moved up to Sheffield about a year and a half. Oh, wow. Ago. And this was actually, he served in the Leeds mission and he served in this ward. Um, so, oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. So, really oh, yeah, one of the cool things actually when we were dating is we actually did um, – a trip to Scotland um, and he met, got to make, meet the Fredericks and then his mission president was still here in Leeds and we met them as well. So that was wow. really quite cool to do both of, we were able to do both of our missions, meet the mission presidents, meet people that we'd kind of served with and taught. Um, so, so that's a really cool thing for both of us to kind of share. Yeah, that's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, so we we now have we have five children. So wow. our oldest is twelve, and our youngest is four. Who I am worried. Um, we'll see at some point <laughs> um, t- tonight. So we'll we'll see how we how we get on. <laughs> and what ages? Or you said the age range, but. Boys yeah, and girls. 12, the yeah, so our eldest is a girl, so she's 12. Then we've got a 10 year old boy, and then we've got um, an eight year old boy, a six year six year old boy, and then our youngest is a girl. All right. So, yeah, so that's so sounds fun. like a fun household. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I'm sure they keep you really busy. They do. They do. <laughs> I haven't had a lot of sleep in the last 12 years. So when you said, you know, this is all, this is the way I remember it, I was thinking, oh, that's <laughs> all good. A good memory. So it's all good. You bet. All right. So let's go back now to March 2006 and you can start MTC or Scotland, wherever you want. Um, and just, you know, kind of run us through the timeline of your mission and, who and where you served and we'll just we'll talk about what you want to talk about yeah great well so the mtc um was fantastic um it it was a shock um you know the having to you know take your companion to the toilet with you um was (laughs) (laughs) was a shock and i struggled with that um you know those first you know that first week but but also we had, you know, I'm not sure who you had for them. Oh, his name's slipped from my head. Um, President Winwood. Yep. President Winwood. And he he was just fantastic. And and the spirit, you know, for me, I, you know, I see it as just such a spiritual experience. Um, I learn a lot, an awful lot. Um had you know, some hard experiences where you, you know, you're struggling with the lessons and, and confidence and, and things. But um, we, I actually, my my best friend received her endowments in the Preston Temple while I was in the MTC. Um, oh, wow. And was given permission for me and me and my companion to go. And awesome. You know, they, they kind of said, right, you can go. But you have to be back for your milestones. Do you remember those milestones where we had to do the fake lessons? And, and me and my companion hadn't been doing very well. On them. We'd, we'd struggled. And so they said, you've got to be back at this time for your milestone. Um, and so we went and just had, for me, just one of the most powerful experiences in the temple uh, and being able to be there for her, for, you know, my best friend and, and be with her family and have this amazing experience. And then I remember us running, you know, to get back in time for the milestone. We literally ran in, they sat us down and we had to, to teach the lesson and 
you know, I don't think I ever taught a lesson like El Mahomishan. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because, no. like, we'd come straight out the temple and it just, the words just came. And, you know, I think we felt like we could cry at the end of the lesson. Um, so it was just a massive witness to me of, you know, being endowed with power um, yeah. in the temple. Just a wonderful thing. So that was fantastic. And I think just prepared really and the the MTC prepared me for Scotland and they did a great job Um, and we got sent off on that train journey President Winwood I still remember I've actually got a picture I I don't know if this will show right at the beginning I just love this picture so I just thought I'd try and show it here we go let me Let's see if you can see that. So there's President Winwood sending me off to Scotland. Um, and I still remember him saying, I'm not meant to hug you, you know, serious. And he just put his arm around me and said, so I'll give you a side squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he just packed us off and off we, off we went. Um, I've heard others describe, I was in that group where we arrived in the snowstorm in March. Um, and so, so I got the fake Pratt's Hill experience too. Um, you know, they told us this amazing story and then we're like, but you're not going. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Which um, obviously we were like, okay. Um, we didn't know, you know, but and it still was great to be able to dedicate our missions. I think it's a fantastic tradition. Um, I think we're lucky. Scotland was full of traditions. I loved that about Scotland was the traditions and our own little lingo of, you know, chapping and all, all the rest of it, just brilliant. Um, so, yeah, so I had that experience. Um, I think the funniest memory I have, though, was arriving at the mission home. And and I don't remember President Freens. He must have been there and maybe he was with the elders. I can't remember, but I remember walking in and it being Sister Vreen stood in the corridor, I remember those big corridors. And, and I walked in and she was stood there. She kind of put her arms like that. So I kind of walked, you know, to her and she kind of pulled me in and she closed her eyes, which I think she did a lot when she talked. Um, and she closed her eyes and she went, oh, sister, you look like a brat's doll. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome she, to the mission. <laughs> yeah, she said, let's cut that hair off. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> and, and I do. I had really long hair, and I think my first P day, I, I had my hair cut. I, I was obedient, and I, you know, cut a bit, you know, onto to my shoulders to to try and be obedient because you know I know that was really important to her. Um, that the way the missionaries represented themselves, um, which but it was just quite funny I think everyone I told you have to know her to get that and because I think people that didn't know her that I've repeated that to they're like oh you know and they're like <laughs> oh it's fine it's sister breeds <laughs> um you know funny. yeah so that was that was brilliant um and then obviously came that experience where you're all in the room and obviously you know one of those you know, missionaries in there. Um, there were three sisters. Um, no, that's not true. There's def- there was four of us that arrived in that group. So, you know, I think for some of the others, it was more obvious who their companion was going to be. But there were four sisters that arrived, that we arrived together. And so, um, so yeah, so I, um, my companion, my trainer was Sister Lewis. Um, yeah, I, I looked. I looked out. I mean, I mean, they were all great. Um, but yeah, Sister Lewis was fabulous. And then we got Perth, which you know, I ended up being there for seven and a half months. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and but I, I loved it. I mean, it's it's beautiful. Um, it's such a beautiful part of the world. Um, but yeah, she, you know, as a companion as a trainer um well she was just you know 
everything about for her was the love of the Lord. You know, she just loved her saviour, um, which you couldn't ask for a better um, trainer who just did everything out of a desire to, to do what was right for him. And um, so she just installed that in me. Um, you know, she was so spiritually minded. She was so focused um, and, and also patient because, you know, I think, um, I don't mind admitting, I think I was a bit older when I arrived in the mission um, and probably a lot more prideful than most missionaries being that, you know, not wanting to be a junior, you know, because I was older and, and and just the way, you know, I, you know, I was a new missionary that needed a bit of pride kicking out of them and she did it in a very patient, loving <laughs> um, way. And so she was she was fantastic and 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 I I really grew and changed um while I served served with her um you know it was a, a small branch and again you know the members were the same you know they welcomed us and made us feel a part of the branch um and we we served actually with the Brazis I don't know if you knew then they were a couple a mission couple um, and I remember actually when we arrived, they um, said, you know, this branch really needs priesthood. Um, and so they encouraged us every day, pray that you'll find priesthood, you know. And and we actually got quite a hard time from the elders sometimes because our teaching pool was predominantly male. Um, and and I had lots of beautiful blonde companions for that time. And I think of the elders thought that all of our investigators, it was because, you know, it was sisters. But I blame the Brazis. They told us, you know, to pray for priesthood and, and Heavenly Father. We did. We taught some wonderful, um, some wonderful people. Um, one um, story that I wanted to tell was, so, and I think a lot of the a lot of the missionaries actually got to know Colin Thompson, someone that we that we taught. And um, but his the story of how we found him actually, Sister Georgieva had arrived at this point. So we were in a three. So it was me, Sister Lewis, and Sister Georgieva. And we prayed that morning and decided we were going to walk one of the local parks and try and talk to people. And so we were walking along and this bike is coming. And so me and Judgy were decided, you know, we'd step to the side and let the bike pass. Well, Sister Lewis decided she was going to stop that person on the bike. So she stood in front <laughs> of him as he was trying to get past on his bike. He ended up falling off his bike pretty much into a bush. <laughs> to try not to hit this sister missionary that had stood in front um, she swears to this day that she felt she needed to stop him on his bike and, and obviously she was right because um, you know he to us was was golden and, and the way that he received the gospel and the, the spiritual experiences that we had with him um, and being able to go through that journey um, was was really special for us Um and so so yeah but that that was sister lewis you know she was she was brave and she was you know she did what always what the spirit told her um so that was that was her she was fan, fantastic um so it was so it was sister lewis sister georgieva and then um after that so then they both left um after that was I think four and a half months they both left and then and then Sister Stoker arrived so she um was from Arizona and we had a lot of fun when she arrived um when she arrived into at Perth and we opened her suitcase well she had like ski masks and <laughs> like a big like the biggest coat you've ever seen and everything was <laughs> woolen and thick and heavy and it was the summer she arrived in the summer <laughs> and she'd just been told by everyone that Scotland was just cold always cold always wet and she was from the desert and so she wasn't taking any chances so we had to take her and buy a whole new wardrobe because she had nothing for the summer <laughs> <laughs> 
so that was that was quite funny but she again she was fantastic um you know was there with a you know tell a, a great testimony that she wasn't scared to to share um, so you, you trained her then yeah yeah so i um trained you, you trained in the area you got trained in yeah <laughs> that's pretty unique yeah. yeah it is yeah so um yeah but she she was one of these 100 percent obedience you know and and wasn't scared to call me out on uh you know if i took too long getting ready in the morning you know so she was she was great um and just had a brilliant energy um about her and um we i think a couple of experiences that stand out from her was um so we were um teaching a young man called darren and he was preparing to be baptized and um, i think was being baptized the next day and um and so we decided we were going to buy a journal for him and um <clears throat> and it was I, I can't remember what it was but we, we were planning on chapping first and then we'd go by the journal and I still remember that we both just we were walking there to do it and we just felt this prompting that we should buy the journal first, swap our plans round. And um, so, we, so we went with it and we walked into town to buy this journal. And when we walked in to the shopping mall, there was my uncle, auntie and my cousins. And, um, and so I just, here we walk in and I just heard, Sister McFarlane! and um and and there they were and and then the story unfolded that that morning the son had prayed and said because they'd thought oh we can't contact she's on a mission they knew i was in perth but they just thought oh it's breaking the rules we won't contact um but he'd prayed that morning as a young eight-year-old boy and just said and please heavenly father help us to see sister mcfarlane today um or, um and so obviously the parents were then feeling it like, oh, he's prayed. And if we don't see her, um, this will have an effect. And so, and then obviously we bumped into her. And so, and it ended for me, it was just lovely, obviously, to see my family and to, you know, share a little bit of my mission because um, my auntie's from Scotland. Um, so my uncle served here in Scotland. They met on their, on, um, up in Scotland. Oh, wow. So that was kind of just a fun little thing for me. Um, and it was, you know, it was a great thing just as a companionship. And obviously um, we taught Darren, who again, um, who was baptised that week. And again, just for us, it's just, a, you know, those are the prices. That's what, you know, to be able to see somebody, um, and especially for her, because she stopped him um and initiated that conversation and to see him progress um and grow from you know at that time was just wonderful um and then we gained sister wellington so we had six weeks together and then we became a three so sister wellington came so so again she was a, a new missionary so we picked her up um and and she joined us and and I'm not going to lie, we had a lot of fun. I don't know. You know, it's always when there's more, you know, oh, I mean, you can have fun as two, but obviously, you know, we had a little period as well where we had Sister Kenny and Sister Ken, um, Kemp as well in the flat with us. And, you know, just... Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a few of you, and, and me and Sister Kenny were friends before our missions. Um, That's right. So, um, so that was that was an awful lot of fun. Um, but we did do missionary work too. We did, um, you know, and 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 I must say, Sister Wellington again. She was just just a natural people person. People loved her. Um, she just had a, a way, and and she and um, was a real natural missionary. She was and, and became a really wonderful friend. You know, she made people feel really comfortable, and she was a great friend to me, and was able to really help me understand myself as a person and and you know and that's part of the mission isn't it is you really kind of some of the hard stuff as well as the the good um and we you know had great fun teaching and, and she was a fantastic teacher um 
so yes, yeah, so, um, so that was great. And I loved the Dundee dr- district. Um, you know, I've got a, the Jimmy Chung trips. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it was just that I, I actually just, you know, the, the love that some of the missionaries had for Jimmy Chung's, you know, I didn't get it until I went. It was just fun. I, don't, I still don't 100% get it. But <laughs> um, and the youth as well. i got to give a shout out to the Dundee youth. You know, just they were just amazing a special bunch and and just they were the Scottish are just great they're just great people um just love them all amen so, to all of that 100 percent, 100 percent agree yeah so yeah love I love my time there so that was just fantastic and then came the shock of the mission of the call to Glasgow um because I'd, you know, before my mission, I'd had lots of, you know, people that served in Scotland and they'd say, they'd go on about Glasgow in not the most, always the most positive way. And they'd be like, but it's okay because sisters don't serve in Glasgow. <laughs> um, and so the call came to Glasgow um, and that was with Sister Snyder. And and we got quite the, our first day we, we arrived. Um, the zone leaders, I believe, met us at the train station, gave us a map that they'd marked where our flat was. And then basically they were nice enough that they took most of our luggage and they said they would drop that for us. But obviously with them being elders, they can give us a lift. So it was like, okay, this is the bus that you need to catch. Um, <laughs> and, then you, and then you got to walk and then here's the map and here's your flat, you know. And obviously we had no idea. Um, and so we got on the bus, like they told us, and we managed to get off where we were meant to. And we got off the bus and it was dark and it was late. And I just remember that it, the rain was like the thing I've ever experienced in my <laughs> life. And poor Sister Snyder from America and you know her first, because she was a, a new missionary, her first <laughs> night in the missionary mission and she... I still, I still remember because this rain, it wasn't just the rain, it was the wind, you know, but you know, it whipped you on the face. And, and I still remember looking at her and thinking, she's crying, you know, because that, that's not just rain you know, pouring down her cheek. <laughs> oh, no. those, are, those are tears. And, and I probably knew that because I wanted to do the same, but felt I couldn't. <laughs> um, because we, we knew we were kind of lost and it was dark and it was wet and it had been a long day. And we finally found our flat and it was cold and we couldn't work out how to turn the heating on oh, or how to get the hot water going. And so we had a really cold, wet, horrible first night. Um, so it was quite a welcome for poor Sister Snyder, um, who, who just did amazing through the whole time. Because I'm going to be honest, I feel like that was the weather for the like the majority of uh, for our winter in Glasgow <laughs> um but we used to joke because we we said we killed five umbrellas you know during that time and in the end we just gave up because they either became a weapon or they just you know yeah I think most of us had that experience with umbrellas yeah. in Scotland they yeah don't last. they don't last yeah so um so but we I mean yeah, I've got, I mean, Sister Snyder, I don't know if she's, she was a convert um, of just a couple of years. Not that you would ever have known that. Well, you would because of the faith that she had, really, you know, as most converts do, just that fire and that faith, um, which obviously was just amazing. Um, and, and the people, like the members, they just loved her. Um, you know, I couldn't compete, you know, they just loved love sister snyder and that was um and actually probably one of our most spiritual experiences together was finding someone called maddie miller who um is just um one of our favorite people but she actually so she's a member um but um at that time um she she'd gone to church um but didn't tell anyone where she lived so she turned up at church one week um and the Relief Society president 
said, can I drop you home? She goes, okay. But she said she made a dropper at the end of the street um, type thing. So anyway, the Relief Society president was like, so this lady turned up. She was lovely. We just know she lives somewhere on this street. Can you go find her? (laughs) And so we got there. And as you remember, a lot of, you know, Scotland is flat six flats in one in blocks you know and so that was the whole of this street and so you know we're just buzzing you know buzzing 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 and and amazingly though that she actually had put her name on so we found her she stuck you know it said M Miller and um and so we found her we buzzed and she answered and um and my brother actually served in Scotland like there's a big gap like 12 years later when it was um Ireland Scotland and she is a bit of a legend now in Glasgow because of the way she looks after missionaries you know from then she every you know mission companionship will get invited to her home and she will feed them and she will you know she's just just amazing um so that was probably one of our you know big highlights um you know I'd have to mention the pet we taught a family called the Cabangos who were just amazing. Um, that was like one of the, the best experiences we had. Um, the other thing that if Sister Snyder listened that she would want, you know, want me to mention is the fact that I made her run everywhere. Um, because I would plan our time and because I'd just come from a car area, I got it all wrong every time. <laughs> we were always late. So we always had to run to every appointment and she was <laughs> embarrassed to be this crazy because of our bags you know this crazy woman with an umbrella and a bag running along the streets of Glasgow so so I'm sorry I did that to her I, I don't know if she's forgiven me for that um and then next came Sister Garnum who was just the most fun um humble kind um and again just a friend of a missionary um and really worked her magic with me and just healing you know a lot and and just being a true example of christ um in the way that she was with me um just a wonderful person um and also just just a whole lot of fun but so we served six weeks in glasgow together and then we moved to Irvine together um and serve for another three months together in in urban um which was amazing and that was at the time of when it became member missionary work focused um and we were just blessed because Irvin they were doing that already naturally um so that was just amazing for us because again it was a ward that we arrived and they just we're like, well, our friend so and so would like you to go and teach them, and you know, we go visit another member, and they'd be like, oh yeah, we've got a friend. They've come to church a few times, but could you go visit them? And they were just like nothing, you know, we'd experienced before, and just fantastic examples. You know, I kind of feel a little bit guilty when I think of, you know, what they were like and what I should be like. Um, but they were just, yeah, just a fantastic ward and example. And and they just, just the way they welcomed us in as, as missionaries, you know, they, we, were, we were part of the ward. Um, and they involved us in everything. And we were, you know, that was just fantastic. Um, we were able to teach a family called the Adair. So it was Kathleen and her, her two daughters had already been baptised, Hannah and Hayley. And so we were able to teach the mum which was just amazing um Ashley Penders or someone else just to mention that that we grew to love and were able to teach um so yeah there was just some fantastic people and and I cried my last side my last six weeks you know I we well we both were ending together so we knew one of us was gonna have to move um and it was me um and oh. so sister Garnham stayed and I know, and and I went to Livingston for the last six six weeks, um, which was fantastic. Again, just another fantastic ward, and that was with Sister Snyder again. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, so I served with Sister Snyder, 
um, again for my last six weeks and she loved the fact that I was exhausted and I didn't make her run once. <laughs> <laughs> All my energy had gone. And <laughs> um, but um, I guess just one experience to end on um, from, I guess, my time there was um, was we actually arrived and we had no car and we had to have a bus pass, but the way it worked was that you had to buy a monthly bus pass, which basically was all of our money um, on the bus pass. And so we gave all of our money, which meant we had no money to buy food or anything else. Um, so we just had, so we literally, and I think we had like two more weeks or something, something happened at that point that the person who did the money in the office was away, doesn't get a trip to Preston. And so there was going to be a delay, just the time in all was wrong. And, and I was at the end of a mission skin. So we had not a penny to our name, to either of our names. And you know, we had like a good week or two where we had to survive on like a few boxes of cereal. And we basically ran out. And and sister sided in town me, but she just prayed. Apparently that morning she just was like, I'm starving. I I need food, I'm hungry. Um, and we had a, a dinner appointment that night. And on the way home, the sister stopped the car and she went, Sisters, she was like, Have you got food? <laughs> and I went to tell that little white lie as you do as a missionary, of like, we're fine don't worry and sister snyder just went no <laughs> <laughs> and so she was just like what <laughs> but she drove us to the supermarket and just filled you know a trolley of food and filled our cupboards um oh, but again and, and i felt like you know it's the story of a mission isn't it of just those tender mercies like heavenly father was there you know he called us he asked us to do this and he, you know there were trials and there were you know but he, there was always those tender mercies to to remind you that you were there at the right time and he was watching over and and that just finished my mission kind of perfectly of just yeah that we should all be there kind of as his hands and you know, listening to those little promptings and 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 doing and acting and yes and and I just found that throughout my mission through companions, through people we taught, through the members, through strangers on the street, you know, just the kindness and the um the nice things that people did just just changed my changed my life really. Um and and that's why I got my my box of my missionary stuff for this, so I could kind of root through photos and jog the memories, and you know, just those emotions that come back. You know, as I was just just opening the box, you know, yeah. um, just just amazing. So yeah, that's great. Um, any other memories you have of your interaction with the mission presidents and their wives? that you served under yeah definitely so I didn't get too long with the Vreens um obviously I remember sister Vreens is dressing up and and uh you know <laughs> her teaching us about keeping everything clean and um she, she was a great character and and gave us some great advice actually as she left um as sisters and and actually talked to us about her marriage um, and what it felt like actually to be the mission president's wife, um, which was really interesting and insightful to us. I mean, Sister Lewis, uh, she was very honest and open, which we appreciated. Um, the Fredericks then arrived. And um, and I think, yeah, I, you know, I, I liked the change in the mission to, to the um, working with the members more um that they they brought about in his humility and having not served a mission himself and and just trying to do what the brethren um was something I was actually teased about a lot was the way I said brethren I say brethren apparently and um, the American missionaries like to pick pick on me for that it's, it's brethren and I still can't say it properly but, but yeah I got teased a lot for that um 
Oh, I don't want to shame say on that. shame on those missionaries. Shame on those missionaries. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, you know, I liked that he tried his best to follow what they were counselling, and and that was a good thing. Although it brought its challenges to the mission, I know, um, and I'm aware of that. Um, and I think because I didn't serve in Edinburgh, I can't say that I had massive interactions that some um missionaries had and and I and I do think often I hear that's a great blessing to be able to have that time with them and learn from them um but I always felt when I wrote to them I felt kind of a um that when I wrote to him almost that I was writing to my heavenly father you know that kind of father role of someone that was there to look after me that you know, wanted the best and, and I always in my letters kind of wrote and felt that there was someone on the other side that was reading this and loved me and wanted the best for me and you know in, in every interaction I had with, with all of them I felt loved and I felt that they had the best intentions for me and the mission and so I was always you know um, and my brother also his one big piece of advice was to me on my mission was to cause as little problem for the mission president as possible. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, and so and and so I was so pleased when it was Sister Frederick at the end of my mission said said to me, I've never had a phone call from you. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Uh, and so um, and I was like oh well that's my brother's fault I guess but you know that was and I, and I think Heavenly Father just, you know I think because my brother had given that advice and saw that desire in me to try not to cause any trouble <laughs> um, so yeah that's really good I learned that the less interaction you had with the mission presidents was because they trusted you at <laughs> one point like um in our conversation with Elder DePole, the Elder DePole was like, well, we had you and your companions up in Aberdeen. We didn't have to worry about you. And I was like, that makes me feel pretty good. Oh, you know, yeah. but no, no one had to call and check in on me. No one had to, yeah. you know, I was handling the business that I needed to, to do. And, you know, that was because I had that same thought. Like I didn't serve in the Edinburgh zone at all, my entire mission. So I was rarely around the mission home and all these other missionaries talked about, those interactions with President Sister Vereens or President Sister Frederick. And I was like, I didn't really have that. But then I learned after the fact and through this podcast, in fact, that it was because, well, we can put Elder Hewlett and his companion out anywhere and they'll handle their business and we won't have to worry about them. So I was grateful for that insight. Yeah. No, it is. It's yeah. It's nice to hear that. I'm think. Okay, I'm. I'm doing. I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you. I mean, you trained what four, three or four missionaries, and you handled your business in in tough areas. I mean, <laughs> well, we'll, hear, we'll hear what they say. <laughs> well, we've had a couple of the 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 uh, former elders that have come on and talked about how Perth was a challenging area, but when the sisters were there. It was like, you know, a well-oiled machine. You just continued to find new people and enhance the branch there and did exactly what you needed to. And so, and I don't know, what, what ward were you in in Glasgow? Were you in Julian Avenue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, that ward is just as big of a challenge because you have such a vast number of people in that small area that, uh, you know, he's have to do your best to get in touch with as many as you can and yeah. you know but it's a great ward great area and i'm sure you did wonderful things there thank you thank you are there any other uh i mean you mentioned your companions and a few other missionaries are there any others that you served around that you would want to hear from if we could get them on <laughs> on the podcast this yeah. is your opportunity to shout out people yeah i was gonna say i mean i was blessed throughout my mission I think surrounded in districts you know that that I loved um the the Dundee district was beyond fun um and so any of I mean any of those companions you know sister um Stoker sister Snyder any of, of them sister Wellington would be fab um I don't know if they've been on um they haven't yet 
<laughs> not those yet. So yeah, um, but also, I mean, and in, in um, I'm trying to think of names from because also the Glasgow district. You know, we were quite close because there was ten missionaries in the ward. Yeah, at that point, and um, and so we got on well. Let me try and remember names. There was. Oh, Alda, trying to think, sure is it gone with out of Peckingham? Am I saying that right? No, Peckham, out of Peckham, and yeah. Johnston, and Alda, Gustafson. I'm terrible with names, I'm really sorry. No, but yeah, they were just. Lots of, I mean, you mentioned out of the pole and out of how were kind of missionaries yeah. that, so yes, yeah, so there's a lot of, just a lot of good missionaries. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, Jeremiah Johnson will be on in a few weeks, wow. so you'll get to hear, hear from him. Um, but the others, um, you know, if you still have any contact with any of your former companions, our, our, uh, referral ask of you is to introduce us to them <laughs> you know whether it's through sharing sharing your episode on a, a post on social media and tagging them in it or even just reaching out to them individually and saying hey i did this it was a lot of fun yeah and, we, and uh they'd love to hear from you and hear your your mission experience just as well so yeah no um, it's great obviously i listen i've listened to a few in preparation and and obviously what you realize is that you just saw a snippet of their mission right and by listening to these you know i actually um like alder halford you know he actually was from my home ward Okay. Um, and so when he arrived, you know, in the mission, in, we were in Glasgow together. And I saw that snippet as a new missionary, but obviously to then hear the rest of the mission and and journey, you know, was 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 great. And the same with Sister Kenny. I mean, I, I you know, until I listened to hers, I didn't know anything about how she came to serve the mission, even though we were like good friends. And and again, yeah. I realised I didn't know. I felt like I knew about her mission and I was like, oh no, there was all that before I even came. And then there was, you know, although there was a bit in Dundee where we crossed over, um, but there was still the end of the mission and that journey and her insights. And I was just like, yeah, so it's, I mean, it's great what, what you're doing. And, and, and I know everyone that's been involved that I've talked to has, has felt that and it's brought back memories and, you know, spiritual lessons. So so thank you for, for doing this. It's our right. pleasure. We're and grateful spending... you, had, you had a box to, to open up and to look <laughs> yeah, through, you know, because a lot of people may have either left things behind at parents' homes or maybe just haven't kept those treasures as near and dear to their hearts as they were. I hate to say it, but nearly, you know, 15 to 20 years ago for m many of us. And uh, so... We're just grateful that you had those things. You were able to pull them out and recollect. And that's been a huge part of what we've been doing too, is just kind of stoking that fire of what the mission was to us and how it has affected us in many ways throughout our entire lives. It's just been fun to reflect on that. So, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. It's, I know it's a lot of time out of your you know, your schedules to interview this many of us. <laughs> we appreciate you taking the time with five kids, getting them, you know, nobody's made a guest appearance here. That's yeah. pretty remarkable. <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm wondering what bribes my husband's offering out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, really no, we nice we really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. We, we're just, um, you know, we'll, we'll acknowledge that you're a super mom and <laughs> we're, we're just grateful that like, you, like Jack said, that you made the time for us and that uh, we were able to connect and we just want to express how much we love you. We're grateful that we were able to know you and have you as one of our sisters in the Scotland Edinburgh mission. So thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing Hannah. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> All right. we'll say, We'll say goodnight. Have a good one. Love yeah. you.
All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.